So, welcome again to the new lecture of the course properties of materials. Let us uh, again recap what we did in the last lecture. So, in the last lecture we, be, we began our uh, discussion on electrical properties and here we are, we are mainly interested in talking about electronic electrical conductivity or resistivity. There are other uh, properties as well that we can discuss, but uh, our main concern here is only the electrical conductivity or resistivity which is basically the ability of a material to conduct electricity. So, materials which conduct electricity good uh, excellently they are called as conductors with large sigma or low rho which are generally metals. Then we have semiconductors which have uh, intermediate sigma and these are generally things like silicon and then we have insulators which have large rho sorry rho or small sigma such as you know oxides generally such as quads, polymers and so on and so forth they have. And that is the reason we use things like copper for conducting electricity whereas oxides and uh, ceramics or plastics for plug tops and etc. so that they do not conduct electricity and give us shocks. So, different materials have different purposes whereas semiconductors with lower with intermediate conductivity are used for semiconducting devices such as PN junctions etc. So, and then we looked at the uh, Drude and Lorentz model on electronic conductivity assuming that electrons are the ones which conduct electricity in metals or in materials. So, we assume that electrons are carriers and these electrons make what we call as free electron gas which we assume to be a perfect gas. But if you assume which means a perfect gas will mean each electron will have an energy kinetic energy of 3 by 2 uh, kT or half mv square. What it suggests is that then every electron occupies the same energy level and conducts in uh, takes part in electronic conduction. But the problems arise, the problems which arise is that one um, the first problem is the behavior of rho versus temperature. Experiment says that rho should be proportional to T, but the classical model says that rho is proportional to T to the power half. This is classical gas model and then we have this is experiment behavior. Second is the specific heat. The specific heat <coughs> predicted by classical gas model is too large. Whereas, the experimental values are nearly 100 times lower. Okay. So, what are the reasons and the reasons in summary is that not all valence electrons take part in conduction. There is only a certain number of electrons which take part in conduction and we are going to do that by invoking quantum mechanics which will explain that why is that these number of electrons lower which are actually taking part in uh, electronic phenomena. So, this is where we invoke what we say is quantum theory of electron in metals. So, one way to go about quantum theory is to take the help of Schrodinger equation and uh, do the wave mechanics, but we do not uh, I mean that is very uh, that is more elaborate and beyond the scope of this course. So, here we will take a little bit of shortcut and talk a little bit more qualitatively about it. So, the first thing uh, what quantum theory does is it helps in uh, correctly explaining the 
the conduction behavior in metals reconciliation with the reconciliation with the experimental data okay the problem with free classical gas model is the experimental data you may you may have some match with experimental data provided if you happen to be at the same temperature where things match but if they don't then uh, you have no match and then another thing that it does is it assumes is free electrons are there so we we still assume that free electrons are there they are non interacting free electrons can move in a solid but cannot escape it okay so if you have electrons in a solid bar they are there in the bar but they can't escape it an electric field is created by so free electrons can move in a solid but cannot escape it and the other thing is that electric field so we have these uh, you know in a, in a solid you will have these ions so these ions are positively charged and these are surrounded by these electrons electrons are negatively charged and the electric field which is created by by positive ionic cores which are surrounded by surrounded by let's say this electron gas or you can say c of electrons will make electron move okay so the situation is something like this we have if you plot this potential as a function of uh, distance then let's say this is the vacuum level okay so this is the e vac and the atoms are somewhere here this is first this is second this is third fourth fifth and so on and so forth and this is let's say the distance x okay if you now plot uh, the potential energy you know plot energy as a function of distance the energy will go it's very high at the edges so not solid so so this it cannot escape this part but it goes steeply near the iron core iron core like this and then it varies periodically within the solid this is how it is going to vary and the other, at the other side at, at the other edge as well so this is the edge which is let's say x is equal to 0 so at x is equal to 0 the potential barrier is very high electron is going to move within this plane so this plane is something like it's going to move within the solid but it cannot escape similarly on the other side as well you will again have high potential energy barrier on the other side if you go so electron basically on this side and on this side the barrier is too high this is very high barrier you can say high barrier an electron cannot move this uh, overcome this barrier so this model basically is a situation like this so you have this box of length l okay this l is the length of the box this box is this box may contain millions of atoms okay i mean that the atomic density in a solid is 10 to power 20 you know 4 per meter cube something like that okay so it may contain several hundreds of thousands of atoms but at the edge of this solid the potential is very high so this is v is equal to infinity nearly so electron can move within this but it cannot leave the solid it cannot the leave the edges and this model is called as empty box model which is proposed by somerfeld in 1928 okay so electrons 
So, basically what it says that electrons in a metal move in a uniform electrostatic potential. Realistically speaking this potential is not uniform because you have ionic cores, you have electronic electron electron interactions. So, ignoring those effect of ionic uh, ion to ion variations, ignoring the effect of electron to electron configuration, we assume that electron in a metal move in a elect uniform electrostatic potential. So, what we see here the variations which are you know these, these humps are there. So, instead of having these humps what you are saying that there is a there is a line like this, this is the uniform potential. So, the potential landscape is going to look something like this. So, you have something like this, then this and then you will have this. So, basically you have averaged it out to a uniform potential and so electrons move uh, in, a, in a metal or in a solid in a uniform electrostatic potential which is positive with respect to outer space in terms of energy it is lower. Okay. So, and you can say that electron is confined in a by in a box by a potential barrier which is infinite v is equal to infinity. Okay. So, what we have assumed here in this case is 1 first assumption is no spatial variations in potential which is not true, but we have assumed because you have ions you know that there is a very variation of potential energy which is not true, but we have assumed that it is true and then electron electron interactions because electrons also repel each other right. So, electron electron interactions are neglected. So, basically what we are saying in this empty box model in summary there is no barrier inside and a large barrier at the edges. And so far we are talking only about one electron. Okay. So, let us describe first the situation for single electron. So, first the situation is uh, for a for a single electron in a box. So, essentially when you have a, when you have electron in this single electron it has it is in let us say this is in finite space at some constant potential. So, electron is at some constant potential electron is at a constant potential which means it has a constant velocity okay. and if it has a constant velocity it also moves in a straight line. We just assume that it is a 1D box. Okay. So, as per now this is where we first bring classical physics in picture classical mechanics. So, as per classical mechanics let us say electron mass is m e the momentum of electron P can be given as m e into v and its kinetic energy e k 
can be given as half m e v square or we can write this as p square divided by m sorry p square divided by 2 m e ok. Now, this is where classical mechanics ends. Now, this is where we bring quantum mechanics into picture because if you have now situation like this you have a box and you have a electron moving back and forth. If it is if you just take particle like behavior it goes there bounces back it goes there goes to other side bounces back. This situation if you consider a dual nature of electron considering now the dual nature of electron which means that electron is a particle and a wave and this was proven this was proven by diffraction patterns because if it was a wave then electron will diffract and it did show diffraction through lattices right. So, there was a famous experiment that was Davidson experiment that was done. So, electron diffraction was proven by this time. So, electron had this wave and particle duality which means it is a particle but it is also a wave. If it is a wave then this motion of electron within this box can be considered as if you have a rope tied on two ends which means there is no freedom to rope on this, but rope can undergo vibrations the rope can go like this it can have a wavelength like this rope can have a wavelength like this and so on and so forth it can adopt many configurations. So, essentially if you consider this dual nature of electron then this particle like motion can be represented by the wave like nature of electron. So, we can say that particle like nature particle like motion can be expressed by wave like behavior in this case we take a plane wave of wavelength lambda ok. For a wave we know that lambda is the wavelength which is also related to another quantity called as k which is which is called as wave vector where k is equal to 2 pi divided by the magnitude of this wave vector is. And since we are saying that electron is moving in this direction only this is x. So, electron is moving in this direction only which means if it has a velocity v in this direction the k is also in the same direction which means k and v are in the same direction. So, k and v are in the same direction ok. And this of course, uh, this wave like duality can be expressed by what we call as de Broglie's relation. So, the problem with this there is a there is a problem however, we are saying that in this case the electron shows a wave like behavior and you can have multiple configurations of the wave. The wave fills the whole space as a result you cannot find out the exact position of electron. So, you do not know you consider this as a wave, but if you want to determine where the electron is it is not possible to determine the position because it shows the same wave like if you. So, it has a finite probability of finding everywhere which means the product of so psi is the wave function if you product psi psi star psi psi star is same everywhere ok which means you cannot the position the probability of finding electron is same everywhere. It, so, you cannot find electron here you cannot find electron here. So, probability is 0 outside the box, but within the box the probability is the same because this wave packet or wave fills the whole box and you can have this kind of configuration, you can have this kind of configuration, you can have this kind of configuration and so on and so forth and this and the amplitude of this is just this ok, this is the amplitude. Now, if you plot this psi psi star you will get the same number everywhere and uh, uh, psi is proportional to a and then psi psi star will be a square. So, as a result the amplitude will remain the same uh, you, it will not be possible for you it is indeterminate what we. So, basically we can say the position is position of electron is indeterminate 
because of electron wave filling this space. Now this is where we bring in now de Broglie relation. The de Broglie relation says, says that lambda is equal to h divided by p, okay, which means lambda is equal to h divided by m e into v. But lambda is also equal to 2 pi divided by k and this is equal to h divided by p. So, we can say that p is equal to uh, h divided by 2 pi into k or you can say this is equal to h cross k where h cross is equal to h divided by 2 pi where h is nothing but Planck's constant. Okay. So, kinetic energy now for electron we wrote that E k was equal to uh, p square divided by 2 m e. So, this will be h cross square k square divided by 2 m e. Okay. So, if you plot the kinetic energy of electron as a function of k it will go like this. Okay. Now, since electron cannot escape the box, since electron cannot escape the box, so this is the box which is which has rigid wall, walls here, which means the wave must reflect back from the walls. Okay. So, since electron cannot escape the walls, the electron wave just like you know if you have a if you have a big big bar a jar right and you have some water there and you just shake it up since water cannot go out the waves which strike the wall they will come back. So, it is like electron being a wave will also reflect back from the wall okay. and this leads to situation like this. So, uh, now this is like you know having this a string and you this and this a string is you know uh, and you do not you do not allow the length of the string to change, but you change the amplitude of the vibrations. As a result the string may obtain a situation like it may have situation like this, it may have a situation like it can have these various modes of vibration or it can have something like sorry this is not very nicely drawn. Okay. Something like these. So, these are the modes. So, if you take this, so we are taking first the 1D case, we take this 1D case this is only along x direction. So, first we are saying it is 1D case which means momentum P is confined only along x axis in a straight line right. And if it oscillates between the two points, so at x is equal to 0 and at x is equal to L then there is a reflection of wave at the walls. So, this leads to reflection of wave at the walls. Now, this problem is similar to to vibration of a of a string which is tied at its its ends. Okay. So, such string shows various modes of vibration. So, as a result you have now various modes of vibrations and what do you remember from your 12th physics for such a case? If you have various modes of vibrations which means the wavelength, wavelength is integer fraction of the length. Okay. So, this wavelength lambda, so the maximum lambda that you can have is you can have this is the case, then this will go to the other side, right? This lambda 
could be equal to 2 L for this first case. And for the other successive cases for the first harmonic, for the second harmonic, for the third harmonic or the first hygiene state, second hygiene state, third hygiene state this will become lambda divided by as lambda is equal to 2 L divided by n. So, basically wavelength is the integral fraction of the length. What it means is that now lambda is equal to 2 pi divided by k and just put a small subscript n for different values of n this k n will become equal to n pi divided by l and this means so now now you look at it we say that h cross e is equal to h cross square k divided by uh, uh, h cross 2 m e all right we didn't know that k is quantized or k is continuous now we are saying that for a given length of the box this l could be anything it could be 1 meter 2 meter 4 meter doesn't matter for a given length the values of n which it can values of k which are permissible are the values defined by n which is an integer. So, basically k value could, could only be n is equal to 1, 2, 3 and so on and so forth. What it tells us is that, that this e now becomes h cross square into n square pi square divided by 2 m e into l square or this becomes n square h square divided by 8 m l square. So, this is constant for a given material this is constant m is m e basically this is what it says is that now this energies of electron is quantized. Okay. So, you have this multiple energy level for different values of n. So, basically there are multiple electron states which are discrete or quantized states of energy there is no continuous energy. So, even when we say this E is equal to h cross square k square all of this is basically quantized there are different quant quantum values of L there is one value second value third value fourth value they may be very close to each other they may be very close to each other because remember the value of k is very small as compared to L. So, they may be very closely spaced but what it says is that the energy is not continuous it is energy energy levels are discrete they are quantized and and this is what is an important outcome of quantum mechanics. So, what it says is that energy E k is equal to h cross square uh, k square divided by 2 m e which for a box when electron cannot escape the solid is uh, n square h square divided by 8 ml square. So, basically what it says that energy levels are are discrete or quantized. This is the first observation that we uh, uh, that we that we observe. So now, if you want to if you want to do this in the 3D, so in the 3D, in 3D basically the the three directions. So you have x, you have y, you have z. Along the three directions, now if you say then the kx will be equal to n n1 pi divided by l k y could be equal to n 2 divided pi divided by l and k th, k z will be equal to n 3 divided by into pi divided by l along the three directions of the uh, assuming that it is a cube okay, where n 1, n 2, n 3 are the integers. Another thing so this is first thing is the, so the first lesson lesson that we have learnt is number 1 is energy levels are quantized not continuous all right now let us say you have these n number of electrons so this is for one electron okay now let us say we have n electrons so we start from the ground state this is the ground state so, if you have n electrons for complete filling how many energy levels will you need will you need you need to obey what we call as Pauli's exclusion principle right.
this must be must not be violated which means no two electron of same quantum state can occupy the same energy level. So, which means electrons will occupy in this fashion. So, you have one electron of up spin, one electron of down spin that is it. Then you have here, you have here and so on and so forth, you keep filling these energy levels. So, if you have n electrons, you are going to require minimum of n by 2 energy states for complete filling. All right, you are going to require minimum of n by 2 energy states for complete filling in the space. So, as you so at absolute 0, it turns out at absolute 0, it turns out that is 0 Kelvin. As you keep filling the electrons, as you keep filling, there is a maximum energy up to which you can fill, and this energy is called as so this is ground state minimum energy and this is the maximum energy that can be filled without above this nothing is filled. So, every state is filled. So, this is filled filled up to this point and this is the maximum energy state to be filled at 0 k at 0 k. This is E f is called as for me energy. So, you have quantized the states, you have n number of electrons as you keep filling them those as you keep filling these discrete states of energy, you would require at least energy states up to E f for complete filling because every every electron lies at certain energy level right. So, these are the minimum these are the so, this is what is at 0 k. Energy states are also available above E f by the way, but nothing is filled at 0 k above E f. So, above E f states are unfilled at 0 k, they are empty and E less than E f all states are filled. Okay. So, this is what it is. Um, we have learnt about the energy discretization and how many energy levels can be filled um, at equilibrium <coughs> up to 0 Kelvin. Another thing that we did not talk about is density of states. density of states is basically uh, you can say uh, number of energy states which occur between an interval E and E plus d E. Okay. Of course, per unit number of electron states with energy number of electron states electronic energy states we can say. So, this is electron energy states between E and D E. So, this density of states N E for, for 3 D, this we define this as D E for 3 D it is proportional to e to the power uh, minus 1 by 2, for uh, 2 D, D E is proportional to e to the power 0 and uh, for 1 D it turns out to be to e to, sorry for 3D it is plus half and gets this half. So, if you plot this 3D the density of states will as a function of energy. So, this is uh, d e as a function of energy. What it tells you is that you are going to have more states available at higher energies than at lower energies that is what it tells. So, so basically you are looking at this thing is something like this. So, if this is E at lower energy level the density is lower. So, lower density you can say and this is basically 
higher density in the same interval delta E you have more states available in this region than in other region and this is what it means that in a 3D solid this is what happens. So, we will not invoke density of solids here right now uh, we, we probably want to take a much more simpler route what we have introduced is the concept of Fermi energy until now and uh, by introducing quantum mechanics we talked about quantization of energy. they are not continuous they are discrete electron and this was done by assuming that electron acts as a as a particle as, as, as well as other and a, as a and a wave and it's only by assuming this wave like nature because wave when it's in a confined box it has to reflect back from the walls you can further analyze its behavior if it was only particles you could not go any further Okay. So, that is where this wave like nature comes into picture and when you consider this wave like nature then we come up this expression of various values of k, k the wave vectors which are basically which represents various nodes of the waves or the normal modes of the waves which are the eigen states. So, k basically is n pi divided by L. So, there are quantized value of k which gives rise to quantized value of energy okay. and then we said that there is a Fermi energy up to which all the levels are filled at 0 k all levels are are filled. So, if you have n electrons you are going to require minimum of n by 2 energy levels energy states energy levels because each level can occupy 2 electrons uh, because of a spin up and down you can. So, the, so if you have n electrons below E f at 0 k you are going to have n by 2 energy levels okay. and of course, you have free you have empty energy levels above E f also which gets which get occupied as you increase the temperature and which is the point of discussion in the next next lecture. Okay. So, with this uh, we have sort of moved a little bit uh, forward into the free electron theory of uh, uh, electrons so moving on from the Drude model which considers everything as classical. Um, uh, gas where we assume that every electron takes part in conduction. Now, what we have done is we have quantized these energy states. So, one thing you can see is that in this thing you are going to have some electrons with lower energy and some electrons with higher energy. So, all the electrons will not be of same energy 3 by 2 kT. Now, this sort of gives you an idea that if, if electrons are distributed all across these energy levels as you as you increase the temperature not every electron is going to go and conduct only those electrons which are going to conduct are which are lying closer to E f and this is what makes a fundamental difference between classical uh, way of conductivity and quantum way of conductivity. Okay. Thank you.